All right, it's time to start our first assignment in the class. You're going to find those under assignments. And these are worth three points instead of two points. And for each assignment, you'll see a one page, just black and white PDF description of it. So this first assignment is called the Fantasy Landscape. We're going to be compositing, so it's a raster project where we're going to find five or more landscape compositions. So these could be photographic, these can be uh, screen grabs, high resolution screen grabs from video games. They can even be from, from animation, from cartoons, from 3D um, animated movies. And we're going to arrange them into one large fantasy landscape that I say in the manner you feel is most appropriate, but it's going to be based on an original sketch of our own, right? And the final resolution should be no fewer than 300 pixels per inch at 8 by 10 inches. So that's if you did want to print it at 8 by 10 inches, you'd want it to be at least 300 pixels per inch. But we could, you can always make it to be bigger. Now the, the limitation with using PhotoP instead of Photoshop is I'm going to cut that down to probably about 150 pixels per inch which is good for screen resolution, but not necessarily for printing, just so we can process the image a little bit easier on screen. But you're always um, allowed to do a higher resolution if you have Photoshop, if you have the capability to do that, if it won't grind your computer to a halt. So our five reference images are gonna be blended together to form a believable landscape. Now, believable simply means that we can't tell where, where your sources started and stopped. They all need to blend together believably. But that doesn't mean that your landscape has to be photorealistic necessarily. So think of the term fantasy, and we really want this landscape to be something that maybe couldn't really exist in a real world. But it's your fantasy. It's your, the kind of environment you would like to see. It can be natural. It can be urban though man-made objects are harder to composite with than completely organic objects. It can be set in the past or in the future. It can be on an alien land. It can have a totally different set of physics. It's up to you. So this is how your assignments are going to be graded. You can only get zero on an assignment if you end up turning nothing in by the assignment deadline. So it's important to know when those assignment deadlines are, and you'll find them on your course outline. So the course outline, which you're encouraged to print, you know, and keep somewhere you can access. So today is the first, and we're introducing assignment one. We'll be working on it through next class, and then it is due on February 8th, and it's due by midnight on February 8th. So when I go in to start looking at them the next day, February 9th, if you don't have anything submitted in Canvas for this project, like nothing at all, no, no process pictures, uh, no post, then you will get a zero for that assignment. And that's a real world consequence because the worst thing you can do as a professional artist is to, to never, to not acknowledge the deadline, right? But if I'm given a deadline and often I'm given very, very short deadlines by clients, you know, they need something by two days from now. If when the deadline is before the deadline's due or when the deadline is up, I come to them and say, this is what I have. But if you give me a little bit more time, if you give me another day, I can improve it. They, they often will see my progress and see that I've acknowledged the deadline and give me that extension. And it's not like a black mark. But if I just don't turn something in by the time that was agreed upon, then they are never calling me again for any job. And in a worst case scenario, they might blacklist me with their art director friends, and I, I would have a much harder time getting future work. So I give you deadlines to hold you guys accountable and responsible, but it means I want you to turn something in, even if you think you can do it better, right? So this can be just a sketch. It can be your process work. It can be wherever you are at that moment. But if you turn something in, even if it doesn't meet all the requirements, you'll get one point. If you turn something in by the deadline, that meets the bare requirements. So it shows five different landscapes put together. 
but it has areas where I think it can really be improved. I'll let you know where I think it can be improved and you'll get two points for that. And then if you turn something in that you feel is really finished, you went above and beyond the regular, you know, three to six hours of, of working on it in the week to make it a portfolio piece, you might get three points on it. You might get the most points possible. And I call this engaging the viewer as art. You're really looking at it with the view towards who's going to be seeing it and trying to be generous to them and fixing all those little things that might be hangups. And that standard is gonna improve as your skills improve. So you can get zero points, you can get three points on these. <clears throat> now the good news is as long as you turn in something by the deadline, you can always resubmit assignments to get a higher grade so that by the end of the semester, all of your skills have improved so much that you can go back to assignment one, assignment two, spend a couple hours improving it and, and change it from a two to a three pretty easily. And that just improves your portfolio overall. Okay, so some of the policies, I just try to explain that. So if you're submitting improvements all the time and letting me know you're submitting improvements, only significant improvements will result in a different grade. So it takes quite a bit to move something from a two to a three, right? To move from a one to a two just means you have to meet all the requirements. But it's all to encourage you to make the best portfolio pieces you can. Some tips, you wanna find more references than you need. So you're not just gonna find five references, you're gonna find more than that in order to find at least five that are really usable and helpful. And we're gonna learn a lot about, a lot more about using layers, about using um, erasers especially, about maybe using some healing brushes and playing with dodge and burn, some, some new things. So we're gonna be learning a lot of new technical skills to go along with this beyond just trying to make a fantasy landscape that you're interested in. All right. We're going to post it into, uh, I need to update these assignment sheets. I say photo bucket, but that's really, we're doing everything in Canvas now. But we're going to save it as a JPEG format to put up into Canvas. And then where do we put it? We put it right where it says post here. So under assignment sheets and post here, you'll have a description. I try to put everything here as well of the assignment. I recommend Pixabay as a good source for finding your images. And not just because they're Creative Commons open, but also because they're all going to be large enough and high enough quality without watermarks. And then inspiration. I'm going to be uh, very inspired by cartoon landscapes. And this is a project in setting design. It's, it's a job for digital artists. So not just compositing vehicles or weapons or characters, but also compositing settings, backgrounds. And so here we have some, I, I organized some different uh, Looney Tune backgrounds into three different strategies. One is called a foreground focus landscape where there's a big object in the foreground. You can see these rocks in the foreground of each object, of each landscape. And then everything else just kind of serves as a background for that one focal point. You have middle ground focused landscapes, which have something in the foreground, but you're kind of looking past it. So this has these little wreaths of grass in the foreground. We look past it to the middle ground where we have this in focus beanstalk. And then the background is behind that with the big cloud. Here we have a little rock outcropping in the foreground that we kind of look past to see these tall peaks in the middle ground, that's what gets the most focus. And then the mountains and the clouds are in the background. Here we have these rocks kind of cropped off in the foreground, but the view is really of the, the glade and the river and a little bit of these trees in the middle ground. And then the mountains and sky are behind that. So to get the most depth, it's what's called three layers of depth, foreground, middle ground, background, you want to focus on focal points being in the middle ground. And then you have background focused landscapes, which everything is kind of really off in the distance that has any definition to it. But that way you're kind of writing off the foreground and middle ground a little bit. So that will make more sense as we, we start to kind of sketch and think about what we want. 
Okay, so here's a past student example. What you need to do before next class, and that's a quick turnover for Wednesday, is you're gonna start looking up references and then based on those references, you're gonna do a little sketch. You're welcome to do this just in your sketchbook. Um, I'll do it digitally just so you can see it, but and you can sketch digitally too, but just a little sketch that then we will use to as a blueprint for compositing our references. And you can see like the sketch of the moons, the sketch of the mountains, the sketch of the waterfalls and the rivers, the numbers correspond with different uh, references that they're pulling from. And they have the bridge and a city. You can see the city, the bridge, the waterfalls, the mountains, the castle, and all of that comes together. You can see past instructional videos. If you want a little preview of what we're doing, in our playlist, right? So we can just look for uh, assignment one examples. So this is from last semester. And you can kind of see what it all takes. And if I don't do a good enough job introducing it today, you can use the first video from that to see how I sketched it for last semester. Because I'm not sure if I'll get to full sketching before our, our class is done today. Okay, so with that in mind, how do we start this project? Well, we're going to start with a Pixabay image search. And I have to think right away, okay, what kind of landscape am I interested in? Do I want it to be winter? Do I want it to be uh, tropical? Do I want it to be a desert? And what I found for inspiration was a cartoon background. It's kind of a fun way to work. So I've started an assignment one folder and I found this middle ground landscape, right? You have this foreground element, you have a middle ground here and you have this background and it's all basically rocks and mounds. I liked the colors, I liked the textures. So I think I'm gonna use that as kind of my inspiration. So I'm gonna look for maybe desert rocks. And I want to look for just raw material that might be interesting to use. So you get some fantasy landscapes in some of these searches sometimes too. Now these are obviously based on other people's photographs. I'm going to right click and open links in new tabs where I think they're, they have good potential. I like Pixabay because they're all high quality. You can see a lot of fantasy landscapes already in there. I like the long shadow of this one. Don't worry about color so much, but you do want kind of nice, clear, open lighting. Because if the lighting is too extreme, then it can be hard to fit with other, with other composites. Oh, I love those succulents. I like this Joshua tree. So you can get kind of ins inspired as you're looking. Now I'm, I'm going to avoid using the, uh, the archway there because it's a little over, over photographed and overused. And instead I'm just looking for these kind of basic rocks. So once I've opened those, then I can go and download them. They're all going to go into my downloads at their largest size. To be in Pixabay, they need to be at least 1,000 pixels. So now I've got plenty of rocks. Now I want to think about, well, to match my inspiration, I need kind of mountains, right? I need mountains in the distance. So do I want desert mountains or do I want kind of 